Welcome back, Stoss23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the Concept Knives a Bulldozer. You may recognize this knife because I did review this particular bulldozer. This was a prototype they sent me, a more budget-friendly uh, version in D2 and copper scales that have a pretty nice patina on them. Um, and I'm going to try my hardest, but it's just been difficult lately. I'm going to try to give this one away. Uh, so if you're interested in winning uh, this particular uh, bulldozer in the comment section, um, just put, uh, I like me some bulldozer. And uh, you'll be entered for the giveaway. I will try to pick it on Wednesday. The rules, you must be 18. Sorry, legality purposes have to be 18. And it will be U.S. only. Um, or if you have a U.S. address for me to send it to, I will do that as well if you're outside the U.S., but I'll only ship it to the U.S., uh, once again, legality purposes. But uh, awesome knife, and uh, good luck. Hopefully, I can find a winner for this one. I will be picking the winner if I didn't say it already. I'll pick them probably on Wednesday. Uh, I'll either do a quick live live feed or um, we'll just draw the winner like that, whatever. Um, so good luck. Now to the more premium a bulldozer. This one comes in at $245 and it comes with this nice Timascus pivot collar that's probably dirty right now because um, I was testing it not too long ago. And you get a Timascus. Uh, pocket clip that is just a like I'm not a huge Timascus fan but when it's just like a nice little pop of color especially with these scales they have this like gray finish on it and I don't know if that's a actual finish or if it's a blasted finish but it almost looks like a like a, bl a gray titanium nitride or something where they kind of did a light tumble to it it just looks so nice and classy uh, just very, very nice knife overall. Let's get some quick specs out of the way so you can have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a total length of 8.25 inches, a blade length of 3.75 inches, so it's in that larger uh, size range. You have a grip area from right here to the back of 3.75 inches, a handle scale thickness of 0.52 inches, and a closed width in the pocket of 1.28 inches, so it's pretty narrow in this uh, dimension. And your blade stock thickness is coming in at 0.125. And the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is ranging from around 14 thousandths at the thinnest portion and uh, 16 thousandths at the thickest portion, sharpened at 20 degrees per side. You have this nice, elegant looking full size EDC blade that's definitely very capable. Uh, you have nice full flat ground blade with this uh, black wash finish on it. it. looks very nice to me. If you don't like the black wash, they do have one with a satin blade, I think it is, and a Timascus scale um, that is a little bit more expensive. I think it's like $299. Uh, you have a very nice needle-like point right there. Very good for doing those drag cuts, detailed cuts. And uh, you have a very well done sharpening notch right here that clears that plunge and you should have a good bit of sharpening life left before it starts to widen up in the back. You do have a row of jimping here. I'd call it medium traction. Um, it, it sits flush underneath the scales up to right there. Then you have that little bit of bitter jimping and you have the coating. So it's not, it doesn't bite into it. However, I didn't see the need for it whatsoever in all the testing I did. All right, now let's see how this nice full flat ground blade performs. Right off the bat, the knife was slicing so well. It came very sharp from the factory, and this was one of the better edges I've gotten out of the box, especially retaining that keen edge. Um, you will <laughs> definitely want to be mindful of that sharpening notch uh, that it comes with because it, materials can get hung up there, but it wasn't that much of an issue once I realized where I, my edge was landing whenever I hit that cardboard. I also loved the gradual belly that this knife has because I did not feel like I was going to slide out of the cardboard when I got toward that tip like a knife with uh, more broad belly usually does. And the ergos were really nice in this light duty cutting. 
Now moving on to the Pine 2x4 to test the ergos and how well the edge is biting. The edge was definitely still biting great, nice, hard, and deep, and do the light curls. And the ergonomics were really good, except the narrower handle made it a little bit harder to hold on to. I had to squeeze a little bit tighter, kind of fatiguing my forearms and my wrists. So long periods of cutting may be uh, difficult if that's what you're going to be doing with your blade. Showing how deep it was biting into that wood, and I'm going to show it again here when I put a little bit more force in. The half inch twist to the side rope can be a challenge. Uh, when the knife doesn't come with a good factory edge that's sharp and has some bite, uh, it, it's a struggle. But fortunately for me, this edge was great. It has a nice little belly going toward that tip, made it made cutting on a flat surface a breeze, at least with the way I grip, grip a knife with somewhat of a pinch grip and uh, I'm able to get a lot of force into it. And then you can see I'm able to do these rocking motions because of that belly. Very easy to do this and it was nice and comfortable. I made 35 cuts of the twisted sisile rope and the edge was still good. I just wanted to save some of that edge for uh, this portion of the testing. These type of cuts right here are very easy with these reverse tanto style blades. You can use that tip to drag through the material and it passed through very nicely. At this point that edge was holding up very well, still nice and sharp. And that is showing right here, whenever I cut this, uh, that bungee cord, if it's not sharp, it's just going to tear the uh, edges of that material. Here you can see the, the black wash finish kind of binding up on that rubber. That's usually why I do this type of cutting. It's just like cutting up a hose pipe or something like that. Now it, it's cutting it very nicely because it has good edge geometry, but that uh, that coating will kind of drag a little bit on you know break those materials that are going to catch the sidewalls. It did great on this double walled uh, corner cardboard. And when we moved on to this uh, denim, it blasted through this denim. This, this knife very much so impressed me with its uh, performance, no doubt. That 20 CV held up nicely, and we're going to test that edge right here. You'll see it has a really good working edge. It has one little minor hang up right there, but for being a factory edge, I think it held up great. And once I put my own edge on it, it's going to hold up much, much better. That's at least my experience. Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. Uh, now let's move on to the action. This thing is ridiculously smooth. Uh, I have taken it apart and cleaned it. I did notice it did get a little bit smoother after I did that, uh, but it was it was smooth from factory. It's a nice front flipper. Um, the jimping catches that finger nicely. Easily front flip it because it protrudes a little bit higher. You can also do that finger roll and I can do the reach around just depending. You got to make sure you're not grabbing onto that lock bar. Uh, but doing the regular front flip, my fingers are on the clip and I can easily roll it. If you want to do a nice slow roll, you can do that as well. It's riding on ceramic bearings and a ceramic detent ball. And like I said, that action is very, very smooth. I would have loved to have a flip, I mean, a thumb stud right there because I think it would have been an excellent thumb deployer. But uh, if you would have put one, it, it would kind of been in that uh, cutting path unless you put it right up there it would have been close I don't know however it's not there so let's not worry about it all right let's close it up you got a t8 pivot and t6 body screws the pivot has uh, like a black coating on it and you have a blue I guess coloring on the stainless steel hardware your uh, lanyard hole could probably fit some 550 it's it's not the biggest but i would have wished it would it wouldn't be there at all uh you do have a tip up left or right handed pocket clip let's check that out in the pocket one thing i did notice um whenever i was wearing this in my shorts as you can see it sits not deep but i mean pretty deep you don't have much sticking out but being that you have this polished uh timascus clip on the smooth scales it, it is a little slick going in and out and uh, wasn't a problem with my jeans, but with my thinner shorts, it was, you know, kind of worrying me that it would come out without me wanting it to at least, but just something to note. Um, you had this nice deep chamfers on the tie scales, like I said, with this gray finish that really contrasts well with that black blade. You have a anodized blue titanium backspacer, comes up about a quarter of the scales. The rest of it is flow through construction. 
and there's your stop pin and it it does a good job of wrapping around uh this little area right there all right let's check out that lock up hopefully y'all can see that it's sitting at about 40 percent absolutely rock solid no play any direction at all and the access to that lock bar is very nice because you have this cutout right here and you have this chamfer so it's very very easy to get that thumb in there which a lot of knives these days <laughs> i have to jam my my fat of my side of my finger in there easy to get that uh finger in there to disengage that lock you do have a stainless steel lock bar insert so uh you have some life uh to that lock and if it happens to go all the way over you could get it changed out uh, let's check the inside as you can see you have a lot of skeletonization on that show side scale and you even have some on that lock side scale bring the weight down to this knife a good bit let's check out that weight first in grams 124.7 grams and 4.39 ounces for the size of that blade and you know the heftiness of this knife i think that is outstanding for some quick size comparisons you have the ontario rat model one and the rat model two it's right there in between closer to the rat model one and both the spyderco pm2 and the ritter ho rsk are excellent size comparisons the pm2 is a hair longer and the ritter rsk is a hair shorter all right nitpicks and complaints more nitpicks um if like i said if you are going to be doing a lot of extended cutting these narrower scales could start to fatigue your arms a little bit i know it did for me i had to kind of like swap up my grip a little bit because i was really squeezing down on here to make sure it didn't twist in my hand also i would have loved to see a, a, a thumb stud version of this i'm not a big uh front flipper fan but some people do love them and lastly uh, like I said, the smooth texture on the scales and the polished clip, you know, can be a little bit slippery. Now, did I have any issue with it coming out of my pocket? Not at all. So overall value of the knife at $249, I think it's an excellent deal. You know, you get CPM 20 CV blade steel, which is a high edge retention, uh, super steel, powdered super steel. And you have these nice, uh, Timascus accents, which you know, most Timascus uh, accents are make the knife like $150 more, at least in my experience. So overall, this is probably my favorite concept knife to date. It it looks looks really nice. It, it's comfortable in hand. The action's outstanding, and that blade is super super slicey. So definitely one that I can recommend and one that I like. Uh, I definitely like to hear your thoughts. And of course, if this one is out of your budget, they have this particular one that's out with uh, the D2 blade and the micarta scales, a good bit lighter. It's still just as slicey, nice and smooth action, uh, nice and poppy detent. This one's going to run you like $77, and they also have a G10 uh, D2 variation for $75. So really, you can find something for everybody's budget, and I don't think you can go wrong. If you, want, if you want that edge to hold up a little bit longer, then go with this one, and you know a little bit upgraded in the materials. If you want something just for a nice beater work knife, then go this route. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Good luck to everybody who enters the giveaway, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.